This is going to be the first year that I'm finally going to work smarter and not harder when putting my roll-in aluminum boat dock in the water. I made this awesome airlift bag for floating the dock sections into place and adjusting them. I'll link to my build video for that in the description below for those who are interested. I also combined a trailer hitch attachment with a boat winch to make a light duty hoist for lifting the dock sections at one end and driving them down to the water's edge. This is my first attempt to use all this stuff, and spoiler alert, it went really well, so I hope you stick around to check it all out. And while you're at it, consider hitting that like button and maybe subscribing. Here's a word of caution before we get started. Lifting heavy stuff like this can be dangerous, and the assistive devices that I've built are unproven prototypes. If you decide to do something similar, do so at your own risk, and please take the necessary precautions to stay safe. The folks over at Nixie Sports heard about my airlift bag project and generously sent me over this awesome dual chamber pump that's designed for inflating stand-up paddle boards. They also make other inflatable products and cool marine-related gear. Definitely worth checking out. This pump has totally exceeded my expectations in terms of build quality and performance. The assembly is supported by two metal support tubes on the front and back. It has an integrated pressure gauge and levers on the back for adjusting how the pump works at different pressure levels. In my case, I'm only inflating to about 1 psi, so I can use the lowest pressure setting with the highest airflow. In this mode, it pumps on both the up and down stroke of the handle. Using this, I can pump up my airlift bag in a little over one minute. Pretty cool. To connect the pump to my experimental air manifold, I 3D printed an adapter for the Hulky Roberts valve connector that's attached to the output hose on the pump. I designed the adapter to be slightly long so I could slowly sand it down to make the connection fit tightly. I'll put a link to the 3D model in the description below along with a link to the pump. To attach the lift bag to my dock sections, I built a wood support structure that kind of looks like a mini ladder. I wanted something light that would be easy to strap to the lift bag and then strap the whole thing to the underside of the dock sections. I made some straps out of this cool velcro style material that you slide through the included D-rings and fold over onto itself to make an adjustable strap. I've never seen a product quite like this before, I'll throw a link in the description below if you want to check that out, along with the other relevant products from this video. Alright, the lift bag's ready to go. Let's start moving the dock sections around. I built this trailer hitch mounted hoist that consists of a hitch mount that's used for mounting a bench vise behind your vehicle. I modified it slightly by drilling holes that fit the hole pattern for a boat winch. The hitch mount has a stated rating of 200 pounds, and the boat winch says that it's for pulling but not for lifting. The weight of one end of my dock sections is a lot less than 200 pounds, but any sort of shock force will increase the load being put on this setup, so I'm going to drive this thing around pretty gingerly. I'm not using the mount or the winch for what they were designed for, so I'd say this is kind of in danger zone territory, but I'm comfortable with the risks involved with this setup. Driving the dock sections around is pretty effortless. It's just like backing up and turning with a trailer, but with a little bit of wobbly slop in the movement. I attached a 2x4 to the face of the hitch mount to protect the dock section when it swings into the mount, which definitely happens and is a good reminder to drive it around slowly. I'm able to drop each section right in the water, requiring pretty minimal manual lifting to get the section into its final position. For the dock sections that go into deeper water, this is where the lift bag is going to come in handy. With a little help from Mrs. Builds, we strapped the lift bag to the underside of the dock section, keeping it closer to the wheel side, which is heavier. I've been waiting all winter to try out this lift bag, so to say I'm excited would be an understatement. I threw some pool noodles under the other end of the dock, so I wouldn't have to constantly support it while floating it into place. The lift bag placement ended up being so close to the center of gravity that the pool noodles were barely needed. I put a few ropes on this section to help maneuver it into place, and I had Mrs. Builds off camera holding a rope attached to the far end in case I needed a little bit of extra tension in the opposite direction of the water current. Putting this section in went flawlessly. After getting a bolt screwed into each side, I lowered the far end of the dock by opening the valve on the lift bag to drain the air. After a few Spider-Man moves, I got the lift bag out of there and now it's time to put the large dock section in. This one is the heaviest of the bunch, and it's definitely the most awkward. I think it's about 6 feet by 10 feet, and my other sections are about 4 by 12. This one is also more tricky, because instead of going straight out, we turn it to the side. I didn't get the balance quite right this time, and I also forgot to grab my pool noodles to help support the opposite end. This thing really wanted to lean away from us, and at one point I thought it might even roll over. We took our time and managed to get it hooked in place. 
I definitely want to make a second lift bag so I can have flotation on both ends of this dock section. I wanted to do this from the beginning, but I thought it would be wise to see how well the first lift bag worked out before investing the time into building a second one. This last dock section is placed pretty well, but it needs a little adjustment to square it up so I can bolt everything into place. This is what's so great about the lift bag. I can easily inflate and deflate to make adjustments with very minimal effort. This is something that I've never been able to do easily in the past. I'm really happy that this manual pump from Nixie Sports works so well. I had originally bought a battery powered pump on Amazon that refused to charge, and that really turned me off to the idea of relying on something battery powered. The flexibility of this setup is super great. I'm able to easily lower the left leg down by supporting the corner with the bag, allowing me to stand on the corner without making the dock sag. This was something that used to always be a pain and usually required further adjustment later to level the dock section. Sadly, my camera died when I was lowering the corner leg, but you get the idea. All right, well, that about wraps it up. This one was definitely a huge success, and I hope you enjoyed following along. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.